Mr. Sam's, why are we staring at a Cheeto? Well, because I never ate it last time. I, well, that's good you didn't eat oh, it. Oh, there's only like two calories in it. Yeah, well, that's true. Yeah, and, but then I remembered that um, we shot the video first, and then yeah. we made this lesson. And this has been on the balance, the balance directly With, on the balance. It's like lead chloride. And who knows what else there. has been on the balance? So that's actually why I'm not eating. Might cause I, brain damage I'm, if you ate it or worse. It's possible. I'm well, no, not worse not concerned about uh, the calories. Really. <laughs> well, I think we should move on to our next topic, Mr. Sams, and that is energy and stoichiometry. 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 Did you think you were done with stoichiometry? <laughs> No. no. Yeah. So, hey, we're going to do some stoichiometry stuff today. Hey, one thing we got to do is we're talking about chemical reactions because the This is chemistry after all. Yeah, so you have to have a chemical reaction. So, mm. here I have a chemical reaction. That combustion of propane. The combustion of one propane. One of my personal favorites. Well, you know, you've got that torch. Oh, do. Yeah, and that torch is the combustion and of I propane. And I have a barbecue. Yeah, lots of that. Yeah. We, we all burn propane Turkey for fries. All right, let's balance this, Mr. Sam. Okay. It's not a balanced equation. Nope. So, remember the Cho2 rule? Cho2. All right, so I got we do the C's first. Three carbons. So, I'm going to put a three there. And we do the H's. H's. That'll be a Four and here. we do the O's. There are three times two or six oxygens here and four here, so that's a total of ten. Yep. So this is a big five. So it's Kay. one, five, three, four. Kay. But when I understand the chemical now, we're interested in the energy. energy. Well, it turns out delta H, which we learned about mm -hmm. a while back, is negative 2200 kilojoules per mole. Negative. That means it's exothermic. That's exothermic. It means it releases energy. Mm -hmm. I know that because, of course, when I burn propane, like when you it's burn the hot. torch, it released energy. If yeah. I would have touched it, it would have released energy into my hand. Mm -hmm. A lot of energy. So an important hand. thing is that if it's negative, the energy goes on the right. product side. So you say plus 2200 kilojoules. Now you notice something that I didn't do. I didn't say plus negative 2200. Right. Because the, the negative neg just tells you that it's exothermic yeah. and therefore a product. Folks, there's no such thing as a negative energy. That just tells you the direction it's of going. energy flow. Yeah. Yeah. And so this is the equation. Now I want you to think about this equation. The thing that's new about this equation, we're adding the energy component. And as we add the energy component, we got one mole of this plus five moles of this makes three moles of carbon dioxide, four moles of water, and 2200 kilojoules. Mm -hmm. So this is a energy equation, folks. Or an equation. And think of the 2200 as just another coefficient in the balanced equation. Okay. Now it's not a nice a one, two, three, or four. It could be 2200.76. It's just a number. Right. Okay. Now let's do one that's uh, a little different. Okay. This is the heat of solution of baking soda. If you guys remember back to doing the baggy demo, demo at the very beginning of the year, you had baking soda, you dissolve it in water, and it has an energy. It turns out this one, by the way, it breaks apart into sodium ions and hydrocarbon. I should probably put AQ here as it dissociates into ions. And um, it has a delta H as well. That's of, positive. Yeah, notice that I don't have a negative sign there, so that by definition means it's positive. So we would just say plus. 15.9 right. kilojoules. Positive meaning endothermic. Endothermic, we put it on the reactant side of the equation. So if I was going to do some stoichiometry with this, my coefficient for energy is 15.9. For sodium bicarbonate, it's 1. For sodium ions, it's 1. And for bicarbonate ion, it's 1. one. All right, now let's actually mm -hmm. do a problem okay. like uh, we would do um, on the worksheets, okay. you know, uh, problem sets. Okay, math. energy and stoichiometry. This is a math problem. So yeah. sample problem 1. The value of delta H for the reaction below is such and such. So we have calcium carbonate reacts. All right, now wait a second. We get delta H. It's mm -hmm. positive 88. So where does that go? That goes on the left. So I'll say 88 kilojoules right here, right? Yep. So now I've got some other numbers here. Oh, so okay. Actually, let's go to the next okay. screen. 5.6 grams, 88 kilojoules. So this is 88 kilojoules, and we had 5.6 grams of the calcium carbonate. Mm -hmm. So I've got 5.6 grams of this, and I want to convert into energy. Into energy. Okay. This is a little bit different, isn't it? So I'll take 5.6 grams of CaCO3. Start with what you know is a fraction okay. of one. Convert to moles. Convert to moles. So I'm going to say grams of CaCO3 to one mole of CaCO3. I think that weighs 100. It's 100, yeah. I, was, yeah. I wondered if you just knew it off the top of your yeah, head. Yeah, I was pretty sure it was 100. So um, grams of calcium carbonate cancel. But I don't want grams of calcium carbonate. I want to convert to kilojoules. So here's where we have this is plus a one. I'll say um, one mole of calcium carbonate. Now, I put a one there because there's a one right here mm -hmm. from this coefficient. That number goes here. If that number's a six, I'm going to put a six right. there or whatever. Just like a mole ratio and then we did. The 88 is just another coefficient, so mm -hmm. 88 kilojoules. It's actually kind of shorter than some of the stoichiometry we've done before. And folks, that's the yeah. answer. Yeah, we get 5.6 divided nine. by 100, and you get what? 4.9. 4.9 kilojoules. kilojoules. So you, if I had 5.6 grams of calcium carbonate, it would, take it would absorb 4.9 kilojoules. Yeah. Not too tough, is it? No. All right, let's do it, uh, one more example. 
Let's do one more example, Mr. Sams. Okay. So in this example here, we have uh, the combustion of something called heptane. 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 Heptathlon. How many? What, what's what's a heptathlon? Seven. Seven events they have in the Olympics. So hey, in fact, a friend of mine, you know, he was the coach of the Olympic heptathlon coach. Oh yeah. Fun facts, no one tell. Okay. Mm. <laughs> so hey, we have this heptane, which is C seven. H16. I have a feeling we're going to need a balanced plus equation. Plus oxygen. Yeah, that's why I'm starting to write this down. Make CO2 and H2. I didn't even hardly look at the question, did I, Mr. Sam? No. Because I know I need to get a balanced equation. you got to do a balanced equation before you can do anything. All right, the CHO2 rule. So carbons, I'll put a 7, seven. here. Yeah, okay. And then for hydrogens, I'll eight. put an 8. That'll be for oxygens, there'll be 14 here, mm -hmm. plus 8. 8 and 14 is 22, so that makes this an 11, right? 11, yeah. And that locks this in as a 1. Now, okay. as I recall, we can look back here, the kilojoules for the whole reaction, the delta H is negative 2145. So that okay. goes on the right side. Yes. So this is plus 2145 kilojoules. All right. Okay, there's my balanced equation. Now, yep. wh what do I know? I knew we, I had 50, 1566 kilojoules. I had 1566 kilojoules. That's what I had. That's my given amount, and I want to convert to what? I think uh, it's grams, grams of, of CO2. Grams of CO2. So that's my starting mm -hmm. point. Okay. Now it's not a big deal, guys. A lot of people get struggle. They say I'm going to start with kilojoules. Yep, that's okay. Yeah. 1566 start kilojoules. With what you know. Always. And I'm just say kilojoules. There's no kilojoules of something because that's just the energy of energy. If you really want to get particular. Now I'm going to use my coefficient. Now that's a funny coefficient, but that's okay. 2145 kilojoules mm -hmm. for every seven moles of CO2. And then my kilojoules cancel, and now I'm going to just use the molar mass of CO2. So one mole of CO2 is equal to so many grams of CO2. I look up at the periodic table, find carbon plus yep. two oxygens, and I happen to know this one. It's 44. I yeah, a lot of people probably, you probably, a lot of you students know that. And so I'm just going to take 1566 times 7 divided by 2145 times 44, and I get 225. 225 grams of CO2. So if I were to produce 1566 kilojoules, I would also produce. 225 grams of CO2. Mm -hmm. I could also calculate, say, how many grams of heptane would be needed, et cetera, et cetera. So uh, uh, a scientist, or an engineer actually, probably more likely, they, if they said, I need so much energy, how many, usually they might actually typically ask this question, how many grams of heptane would I need to burn? Yeah. And they could calculate that amount, and then that's how much they would burn. Typically, actually, they would burn more than that. Because you never get 100%. Because you never get 100%. Yeah. Like so, our Cheeto, we didn't get 100% of that energy yeah. in that can. Yeah, so we doubled it or whatever. So yeah. same concept. Okay, great. We'll see you in class, guys, or on the Internet. Bye.